On May 28, 1934, in a tiny log house in the farming community of Corbeil, Ontario, a 25-year-old French-speaking farm wife named Elzire Dion literally gave birth to what was arguably the North American pop cultural event of the decade. Elzire Dion, already a substance level mother of five children, gave birth to five more, all girls, all sickly and premature, and all at the same time. The birth did seem nothing short of miraculous in 1934. Five identical girls born from the same egg, collectively weighing a scant 13 pounds, 6 ounces. Annette, Cecile, Yvonne, Emily, and Marie. The Dion quintuplets. The father, Oliva Dion, had a problem. How, in the middle of this terrible depression, was he going to feed a family that had doubled overnight? And that's probably why he decided to accept an offer made by a promoter within 24 hours of the event to have them exhibited at the Chicago's World's Fair. Dion's decision would prove devastating indeed, the precise moment when the Dion saga would shift irrevocably from a tale of human triumph to an account of heartbreaking tragedy. With the almost unanimous support of the press, they were made wards of the state under the supervision of the same doctor, Alan Roy Defoe, who had delivered them. Their parents were under strictest orders to have only minimal contact with their five baby girls. As the poor couple watched the government build the compound come theme park across the road from their tiny farmhouse, the attraction proved a staggering success, the biggest natural tourist magnet the province had seen since Niagara Falls. At the height of Quint Mania a few years later, as many as 6,000 people a day turned up to ogle the Darling Dion's. By 1938, the government of Ontario was making a cool $20 million a year from the business generated by the Quints. By the time the Quints were returned to their parents in 1943, a development which it should be noted is probably explained less by belated judicial fairness than the fact that the kids were outgrowing their tourist attracting cuteness. The damage was done to the Dion family solidarity and was so extensive the wounds continue to bleed 60 years later. The pain, resentment, and heartbreak of the Dion saga are far from subsiding. If anything, the remaining quints seem more determined than ever to exact justice over what was done to them by their family and the government.